As you work in Asset Framework, you may need to configure element attributes or use an existing hierarchy and need to identify attribute configurations. Let's take a look at the configuration of many data reference types and how they can work together to give you a better idea of what's possible with Asset Framework. You may already be aware of PyPoint data references, where we assign a Py tag to an attribute, preferably using a human-friendly name, but there are many others too. We can look up values from tables internal to AF or from linked external sources, perform simple calculations using formula data references, manipulate elements and attributes with String Builder, use analysis service to complete more complex calculations that may or may not be saved to Py tags, and finally build web links, in this case a link to a Py vision display, specific to our line one element. Let's start with PyPoint data references. Here we have an attribute oil temperature, assigned to the Py tag L1IPBT, and we've told AF that the incoming unit of measure is degrees Celsius. We've also told AF that we want the attribute displayed in degrees Fahrenheit, as you can see here. As a user of Asset Framework, you no longer need to know the tag name to find the oil temperature of this asset. Instead, you'll be browsing through your hierarchy as shown up here on the upper left, and then looking for the oil temperature process data information in your attributes. Let's take a look at the configuration of another PyPoint data reference, in this case, the inlet flow rate. Here we have a slightly different configuration where we're doing an average on the incoming information. We'll click on the settings tab to configure some more in-depth information. In this case, we're using value retrieval methods, which is more advanced than we'll be discussing here, but it allows us to do an average over the last five minutes of information for this tag. You should be aware that even when attributes are assigned a PyPoint data reference, there still may be some simple calculations that are done with them using value retrieval methods. AF allows you to build tables, import tables from external sources, or have refreshing links to external tables. These tables are viewed and configured in the library, as you can see here. Let's take a look at the pump details table. You can see that we have a table with line one, the line number, the pump type, and then we have the manufacturer and serial number. We'd like to be able to pull this information into our attributes based on the elements we have selected in our hierarchy in the upper left. Let's start with the manufacturer attribute, where we write out the SQL query with the line number and pump type, and then we'll generalize it with the serial number attribute. We're using a SQL query to pull the result of the manufacturer column from the pump details table based on the line number and pump type. You won't need to learn how to write these SQL queries to pull information from tables. The configuration can be completed under the settings tab. As a more complex example, here we're pulling in the serial number from the same table, but instead of directly writing out line one and in inlet pump, we're using what's known as substitution parameters, denoted with the percent signs here. Percent element percent references the element containing the attribute, while the other substitution parameter references the element one level higher up in the hierarchy. You can even use a table lookup to interpolate values. Let's take a look at a second table. Here we have the target oil temperature table. Our inlet process flow rate is shown here. Based on that process flow rate, we have a target oil temperature. If we go back to our element, we can see that our inlet flow rate is 228.4. However, we wouldn't be able to find that exact value in the table. We can still find the oil temperature target by using the interpolate function which will interpolate between the nearest values in the table, in this case resulting in a value of 152 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a simple formula data reference, we then want to take the difference between that target oil temperature and our current oil temperature, which is a pi tag here. That difference is calculated using a formula data reference. This allows you to do simple calculations with their history not being saved to pi tags. There are some simple functions that are available, again going under the settings tab, and you can see here that we're using the absolute value function, which is right here. Sometimes you, want, you may want to manipulate the names of assets or attributes, or the results, to construct new values. In this case, I have a table, pump repairs, with a list of serial numbers and repair dates and times. 
However, this is an externally linked table. And for the pump repairs table, they were only using the last four digits of the serial number. We liked a way to be able to take the last four digits of the serial number that we pulled in here so that we can then pull in information from the repair date table. We do this using String Builder. In this example, I'm pulling the right four characters of the attribute serial number to obtain 8LGG. Based on that information, I then built a table lookup which pulls the repair date from the pump repairs table. Since I've told AF the time zone information for that table, it also knows to convert it to my local time zone. I then configured a simple formula data reference to determine the day since the last repair. URI Builder allows me to build links to websites similar to String Builder. In this case, I have a link to a Pi Vision display. I've referenced the name of my parent element in this particular link, which would be line one. So depending on where I'm working in my hierarchy, the links that's shown here will update to make sure that when I click on it, it opens up a display with the same line number that I'm working in in AF. Finally, we do not configure analysis from the analysis service here in the attributes tab. That instead would be done under the analysis tab. However, we often output the results of analysis as attributes. In this case, we have two outputs, one where we're saving the history to a pi tag and the other where we're not. Let's start with the case where we're not saving the history. If we go ahead and hover over the orange diamond, we can see the formula that's used for this calculation. Also on the right, our data reference is showing up as analysis. In the case where we are saving the history of the tag, we can again hover over the orange diamond to see the formula that's used for the calculation. However, on the far right, the data reference shows as pi point. In this case, this is the tag that we're outputting to from the analysis so that we can save its history. Let's take one more look at the attributes in a different way. Instead, following the data flow through our attributes to show you how we use different data reference types together. We started out by using PyPoint data references to map three Py tags to attributes in AF. In two of the cases, we did some simple calculations using value retrieval method. We did a table lookup to find the manufacturer of our pump. We also looked up the serial number from a table using substitution parameters. If we were to templatize this element, we would use substitution parameters for many more of our attributes. We used String Builder to pull the last four digits of our serial number, and then did another table lookup to find the most recent repair date. Based on that repair date, we did a formula calculation to determine the number of days since last repair, with AF handling all the time zone information. We looked up the oil temperature target using interpolation, and then did a simple calculation to determine the oil temperature differential. We also look, looked at the outputs from the analysis service, in one case where we were not saving the history, and in one case where we were. And finally, we built a web link to a Pi Vision display that's specific to the line number that we're currently working under. You should now better understand the types of attributes you can configure with AF. See how they can work together to provide even more power and flexibility, and to be able to identify the source data of attributes if you're working with an existing AF hierarchy.